just want to quickly capture this uh, while it's live on screen here. Um, this is a great example here. This is the yen on the left where we we got short right there and then got nicked right there, seven tick stop, and then it rolls over and the machine gets short right there. That's an exceptionally difficult trade for a human to take after just getting nicked like that. Especially on a day like today where that that same nick happened in oil. So if you're if you're doing this as a human and you got nicked here, all right, in oil. So I got short right there, you know, right there. Sixty order, please. And then got nicked there, and then it rolls over for you like like you want, and then you, you know there's this nice there's this nice fall, which you're missing out on now. So that happened earlier. And then the same, basically the same thing happens right here. You you know you take a short and the yen, get nicked, it rolls over, and you're just hating life at this point. And then you get another signal here though, and as a human, it's really hard to take that trade. And yet this is the trade that is is you know the, that you're that you're looking for. The market falls hard. We auto add right there, and uh, you know at this point we're up 66 ticks off. Um, with two contracts in the market trailing by 15 ticks. I think uh, the 6E just placed a trade as well. Yeah, short. So we'll see how that works out by the end of the day. But anyway, I just wanted to capture this. I, I don't normally do live trading anymore, but I happen to be looking at it when, uh, when I saw this. All right, here we are at the end of the day. It's uh, almost 7. And the result of the trade that we were just watching live is here. So that, that actually is a pretty nice exit, right? Because um, the market does not roll back over and break our hearts by getting us out too soon. So we um, entered there, added there, and then we exit for plus 43 and plus 18. Okay. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is that just this weekend, I was thinking, gosh, yeah, why should, I'm, I really should, uh, why am I even bothering trading the yen? Maybe I should, maybe I should just stop. And yet, so th this is what happens. And so if we look at the, um, at the activity for this, for this market, what you see is, you know, small gain, nice run. Small loss, small loss, small gain, small loss, small loss, small loss, small gain, small loss, you know, big run. So that in, in total, it's 4.30 across, what is that, three, three or four weeks? Four weeks um, on, a, on a very reasonable number of trades here. So one trade, one trade, two trades, et cetera. Um, and this is, this is really sort of what we're doing here, which is just kind of keep, you know, be conservative, stay in the game, be conservative, stay in the game, stay in the game, stay in the game until you get the nice run. And then, you know, all automatically, though, is the difference. So we don't, we, you know, we don't have to uh, sit here and control ourselves through all of, you know, this is a pretty long stretch here where you're just kind of eking by and then you get the nice run, okay? And that's really sort of the approach across all the markets. So this is what we've talked about in the past about this is a very defensive posture looking for this, looking for that nice trade. And the other markets, uh, let's see. In the euro, I scratched, I, I took a long trade here overnight. So this is at 2.25 in the morning, my time. And, you know, that's a nice run, right? Um, we're trailing differently in the euro that the analysis shows that we need to give it a little more room. So it's a 20 tick trail. Uh, and you can see why. So, well, not from this trade, actually, but you can see what happens. The, the other markets, and in fact, it, with the euro in the past, we were, you know, we're pulling that stop up pretty tightly, pretty quickly. And, you know, we get taken out on that this little pullback. So if the market continues, you're you're done. You missed it. Here in this case, it's the opposite, right? Um, we make seven ticks instead of 
I don't know what that is. 10 or 12. Um, and what the analysis shows is that if I trail aggressively like that in the euro, I don't. it's not as profitable. So that's why we're doing, you know, the trade management is different in the euro. Uh, let's see. And then later on in the day, where was it? Here. So after the breakthrough here, we pull back and get short. Um, but the market's done going down. So take a seven tick loss there. So <laughs> minus zero for the day in the euro. Uh, gold, I didn't get a trade off. Um, and if we look at it, what we see here. So these light blue bars are this new piece where we're we're now look we're for outside the value area. We're looking and the machine is looking using a specially trained model. Um, so that's what this is. That's what the light blue is. Uh, we start trading right in here. So we're getting code. So if you see the yellow, that means um, you're actually getting a, a, a prediction from the machine. And then we're very selective about the codes that we trade, right? Because we, we've analyzed which ones have the, the most consistent behavior in each market. Here, um, this is a nice short 285, but this is at the top of the hour. So there's news there. So we're blacked out. Um, and then the nice fall is right here, and it, I'm not going to get this because that happens right off the POC. That's that dashed green line, and so I won't enter right there. Um, and then on the pullback, you know, we got to show, you know, we're we're at least looking here to get a little bit, of, get a piece of the next move, but there's no, there's not, there's nothing there for me. And the same thing actually next. That you, there's actually another another attempt, another uh, opportunity here um, it actually bounces off that value area low so hard that you wouldn't get in right, so nothing in gold today um, in oil i took one loss with one tick of slippage this was a little heartbreaking i think i alluded to this or i showed this um during that live trading where we, you know we get short here and it's just a hint too soon and end up missing you know the really nice fall here um this trading here when we get down to here so the the market falls back to the poc and, and thrashes sideways right here so we stay out of trouble there and then uh it gets but the, the real problem that i the thing that i worry about is when it reaches the value area low here and then starts just thrashing along it uh, you can really get eaten alive when that happens that's it, it's almost equivalent to uh, a choppy sideways market in this case, uh, again, because we're our our posture is conservative or defensive, we we, we don't get we don't get chewed up. Um, unfortunately, we don't see a, a, a trade in here to get short. You can you can kind of see, but that would have been nice to get short right there. There was at least a little piece here to get, and then again, uh, in here, I think is that right? So if you got short on that bar you're going to get nicked if you're using a seven tick stop. So you're not going to be too happy. There's not a whole lot left there to get. In other, in other words, we, we got tagged on the nice entry and then um, really sort of missed. Again, this one here we're not going to take because it's right at the POC, but that would be the, the next the next place you'd want to do it. Um, so nothing there in oil today. Or oh, that's it for oil. And then in the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ I'm finding very interesting because... Um, I really cranked up the risk and I'm still not, you know, still not taking very many trades. And so that's a problem you can see here. Let's see, this is <laughs> this is a little bit easier to trade than I, what I've seen recently. It's still tough. Um, you, you can, as a human, you can kind of spot that, that head and shoulders there. Um, this is brutal. Very difficult to do anything here. Um, I'm sure a lot of people got whacked there. Uh, and then this choppy ugliness over here, you definitely want to stay out of. Um, as it happens, we get, we get a signal there to get long, and what you want is a short. Take a loss there. This is all in sim, by the way. Let's just remind you there. Because I'm not willing to trade this live because I just don't. I'm going to talk in a minute about 
why I think um, even though I've cranked up the risk, I'm still not seeing that many trades. Right? This is this is I think I think a total of three today, and um, I think the average trades per day is five or something given given the analysis. And so the this is the you know, those two items are related. In that, do I have a list here? Yeah, average trades per day is five. All right, so three, we saw three today. That's the most I've seen in a couple of weeks here. Um, if we look at, let's just look at what we've seen in terms of results in the NASDAQ, SIM and QH9. And so, it, you know, it's minus 190 since 212 is when I started. So not, a couple of weeks here, and given the amount of movement in the market, um, it, that's good if you're losing money because it's not much, but with all that movement, you'd kinda, you kind of you're looking to make nice big runs, and you, certainly we haven't seen that in a couple the last couple of weeks. Here's the problem, I believe. So look, here's the daily chart of the Nasdaq. All right, and this you know this subgraph here is the average daily range. Um, on a ten, just a ten period moving average, very very simple. All right, and what we're seeing now, are we at the end here? Yeah, that today. Yeah. Um, so the red line here, the red dashed line, which might be hard to see actually, uh, is a hundred points a day, which is really high historically. So if we go back in time, um, <laughs> maybe it's making a liar out of me. Uh, this is February, beginning of February here, right there. Stop moving, right there. Um, let me draw it here. Right here. Oh, it's still not done. Hang on. So if we look here historically, you can see that we spent most of our time well below that that you know hundred daily hundred point daily range. And in fact, well below 80, which is the yellow line. And um, this is back when I was developing the system. And occasionally, you get these spikes, right? But and then in February of this year is when it when it really um, went berserk. And then we had a spike here in. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's right here. Um, this is when the market really just went crazy. Uh, February of last, February fifth, actually, I can pinpoint the day of last year. And then uh, I'm going to have to pause the video to, to um, put this back so that we can see what I want to describe next. But what happened next after that is important here. Hold on. All right, so here is uh, basically the last year, and right here is where the the you know the kind of the wheels fell off the bus right here February fifth. And then we, you know, we spiked up horribly, and then it looked like it was going to be okay. And then we spiked up again, and it looks like it's going to be okay. And it spikes up again, all the time staying above 100 points per day. And then it, and it just kind of settles down into this sort of new normal between 80 and 100. So it's still really volatile. And then it spikes up again, and this is in uh, October, and stays really high. Until now, and you know, is is it? Are we going back to normal, or is it just going to settle back down into this this still really volatile range, but not not insane level? We don't know. The problem is that the machine learning system is trained on this previous data, um, and so this this the market is so volatile; it's essentially random. This is my my hypothesis. And so it's not useful to predict the future, right? If you're just if you're just looking at something random, you, you might be able to find patterns. And in fact, you do you can find patterns, but they aren't predictive, and that's the problem. And so I'm concerned that not only does the market have to settle down before it's tradable, it has to settle down and stay settled down in order for me to. Uh, Give the give the machine data to work with. Now, what will be interesting actually is if if the market does sort of drop below 
you know, you know, drop down to normal levels. If we go back and train it on you know, sort of normal times and use that, will that will that work better than you know what we normally do is train up on, on the latest data. So we're we're going to have to see. But currently, after a couple of weeks here of of, of mucking about with the the Nasdaq, I'm I'm not convinced the machine can trade it on the data that I'm giving it because the data I'm giving it to train on is there's too much randomness in it. All right, so you may or may not agree with that, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. We'll see. I'm going to give it a couple more weeks here, and then, we'll, then I'll decide what to do. Um, that's all the markets? Yeah, okay, so that's it for today. Thanks.